I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Peace, everybody. I'm James David Manning. I am the Lord's servant. I'm going to be revealing some things from a complaint that was filed by Cassandra Ventura against Sean Combs, also known as Puff Daddy. Now, the language that will be used, as you can see, the trigger warning, this document contains highly graphic information of a sexual nature, including sexual assault, or S.A., as many are given to say. I'm going to come right down Main Street. I'm going to say it just the way it is. And while the rape charges that Cassandra Ventura uh, has leveled against uh, Puff Daddy uh, have not been proven and tried and him found guilty, I want to offer this disclaimer that I, when I say the rape, that he is a rapist, I mean that he's been accused of raping. It's what I want to say. He's not been found guilty. But through reliable sources and with tons of information, Cassandra Ventura has accused him of rape, of battery, of, of beating her, of sexual assault, of violence, of blowing up cars, and accused him of making her have sex with sex workers, porn stars, Multitudes, more than one man, one man having sex. Now, with, with Cassandra, Puff Daddy did that to her. Is this the kind of man that BET wants to give an award to? Is this the kind of man we want our children listening to? Is this the kind of man that Howard University is receiving gifts from? I want to be able to be clear about what I can be clear about here now. And that is this. I'm going to come right down Main Street. For too long, preachers have tried to be politically correct. That is to say, they won't use the words that identify clearly exactly what's been said. And so people who want to believe in people like Puff Daddy, because the word was not graphically expressed, a word like penis or masturbation or rape, though it's alleged. I'm going to come down Main Street. If you are offended, I want to warn you that... It's going to be, I'm coming right down. I'm going to say it the way it is. I'm, I, there are words I don't use, and if I had to quote that I would. But I'm going to come right down Main Street. If you're offended, I'm going to ask you to forgive me. It is not my intent to insult or to offend you or disrespect the ministry itself. But I'm going to say it the way it is. This violence, this vileness, this filth that we call black entertainment and black sports and black celebrities and black awards and on and on and black politicians needs to be identified. The covers need to be pulled out and everything that's under the cover needs to be revealed. Having said that, this disclaimer is now the official opening of my statements. In my endeavors to expose the profane insanity of black people, that they are the most despised group of people on the planet at present. Uh, there's no people, there's, there's some people that are much poorer, even though we got literally now over the, we got 70,000 people sleeping on the streets of Los Angeles. We got tens of thousands of sleeping on the streets here in New York, men in particular, lonely women. But yet there's not a poor people uh, in, in Africa or in India that would trade places with the dis dis despicable character of black Americans. I mean, they are the worst of the worst. Um, and so we have been listening to some things that have been said by Cat Williams, who is going behind the scenes. Because a lot of times we think because these people are actors and they got making big bucks, that somehow or another that uh, black people are doing better now. They're doing worse now than they've ever done in the history of the world. Mr. Engineer, bring up Cat Williams, please. Finger out your champ. It's honestly sad. In the meantime, please enjoy my movie trailer to my next film, Lift, which will be dropping on a Netflix in eight days. There is a moment in the trailer where Agu Gumbatharao says, they really love you. I now know she's talking about Kat. Now, people kind of expected Kaven to sue a cat because he just sued at Tasha K just for claiming that he had been cheating on his wife, Eniku. First scandal right was with the first baby. Correct. The one in Vegas. Yes. So these other scandals. It's another one in the office. She pregnant again. Correct, with her second baby. And he's still leaving semen stains all over the county. 
at the yes. heartbeat studio. Correct. And showering and then going home. Like I told Anika. People expected a stronger response from Kevin because we thought he was going to go on a rant against Kat at the very least. I mean, didn't he just sue Tasha Kay for revealing his alleged cheating escapades even though everyone and their grandma knew about Kevin's alleged extracurricular activities? The audacity, right? But since Cat Williams dropped these bombshells, it's been crickets from Kevin's corner. Rumor has it that Kat's got some juicy receipts and that's why Kevin's staying shut. Word on the street is that Kat's holding some explosive evidence about how Kevin allegedly played a role in Diddy's shady affairs with Usher back in the 90s. Imagine this. Usher, the smooth crooner, reportedly lived with Diddy in New York at the tender age of 13. And rumors suggest that Diddy allegedly gifted him an STD. Now that's a bombshell. So what was in Kim's book? You want to hear it? Here it go. Now I cannot confirm or deny what's in this book, but ain't nobody fit Natasha K. Me. So in this book, it detailed his relationships with men, footage of those encounters. It had the names of the men he slept with, a disease. Allegedly, did he give an usher a disease? While it's speculation, the whispers may have some roots in Usher's interview with Howard Stern, where he hinted at witnessing some wild things during his time under Diddy's roof. Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. The plot thickens with a video featuring Diddy, Usher, and Kevin Hart together. Diddy raised eyebrows when he casually mentioned that he and Usher used to wake up and fight over cereal, possibly implying they shared a bed overnight. Kevin, caught in the awkward moment, quickly changed the subject. Usher looked like he's fresh, fresh off a goddamn plane. Usher. Yeah. I should, I should, I should. the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's not, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always now, get <laughs> The young men that wear their baggy pants and listen to rap music all day and all night. <laughs> all these men are homos. All of them. They're all homos. Usher, 13 years old, being sexed up by an old man, Puff Daddy, at the tender age of 13, being banged day in and day out by a 13 year old getting banged by Puff Daddy. And y'all look up to these people. <laughs> if this ain't a scream, I don't, I don't know what is. And, and, and Kevin Hart, same thing, I mean, it's, it, you need to, and, and everybody knows this. Well, you should know it. But this is a life that everybody points to that it's, that black people are doing so wonderful. And, 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 and I, 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 I have, go ahead, Miss Engineer. It's just, it's just, it's just sickening. Early in the now he's one of the richest stars in the world. Yo, what the did Puff just say? Now, the Usher saga adds a whole new layer to the drama. In case y'all missed it, a couple of years ago, Usher faced lawsuits, not just one, but a string of them, accusing him of intentionally transmitting herpes to unsuspecting partners. Laura Helm, one of the accusers, sued Usher for a whopping $20 million, claiming he exposed her to the virus during an intimate encounter. She tested negative for herpes, but the case mysteriously got dismissed, leaving people suspecting hush money had exchanged hands. But wait, there's more. Two more women stepped up with law lawsuits alleging Usher's herpes-related escapades. One accuser remained anonymous, testing positive for herpes, while Quantasia Sharpton, the other woman, didn't test positive but was understandably upset. Quantasia claimed she'd hooked up with Usher just after her 19th birthday, raising concerns about potential health risks for her and her child. This herpes fiasco led to Usher paying a hefty settlement of $1.1 million to another Jane Doe before these lawsuits. Now the plot thickens. Cat Williams dropped a bomb.
bomb, suggesting that Usher's mentor, Diddy, might be the inspiration behind these questionable bedroom activities. Kat even hinted that Kevin Hart was allegedly partaking in Diddy's infamous freak-offs. He backed this up with a video where Kevin made a rather intriguing statement. I think they never been to a Diddy party. If you're not dancing, I just got hard. Then you got to go. So security, Don't if you me. see somebody and they not dancing, <laughs> they got to go. Yeah. Hold up. Did Kevin just catch an L? You bet he did. Cat Williams spilled the tea, serving up a wild theory that Diddy and Kevin might have allegedly engaged in some peculiar activities together involving the infamous freak offs and accusations of SA against the likes of Usher. Crazy, right? Remember Cat's suspicions about Kevin being an industry plant? Well, now Cat's suggesting that Diddy and his powerful pals might have been pulling the strings to orchestrate Kevin's rise to fame? Talk about a behind the scenes plot twist. But hey, the Diddy drama doesn't stop there. Young Miami, Diddy's former flame, is stepping into the ring. After getting some heat for Diddy rekindling things with another ex, Gina Huying, Miami's reportedly teaming up with 50 Cent to drop a documentary bomb on Diddy. Rumor has it Cat Williams might even make a cameo to spill more piping hot tea. The interesting thing is that, according to Cat, Usher is not Diddy's only alleged victim because there are loads of other artists that he allegedly forced into inappropriate activities, including the Criss Cross Boys, allegedly. A few years ago, Cat Williams dropped some serious shade bombs on Diddy and Jermaine Dupree, suggesting they might have been involved in some unsavory dealings with the Criss Cross Boys. The Criss Cross duo Chris Kelly and Chris Smith became mega stars at the tender ages of 12 and 13. As child prodigies in the 90s, they achieved massive success, but like many child stars, they faced some dark issues behind the scenes. Jermaine Dupree, their mentor, played a pivotal role in their rise to fame. However, according to Kat, there might have been more to their mentorship than just the music bits. Kat alleged that both Jermaine and Diddy were involved in grooming the boys in ways that extended far beyond the boundaries of the music industry. The Criss Cross Boys released three wildly successful albums under Jermaine Dupree's guidance. However, rumors started circulating about alleged incidents of SA involving both Jermaine and his pal Diddy. Cat Williams claimed that these traumatic experiences pushed Chris Kelly toward a path of drug abuse as a coping mechanism. Chris Kelly's struggle with substance abuse persisted until 2013 when he was discovered unconscious at his Atlanta home. Despite being rushed to the hospital, he was declared dead three days later. The revelation of his family acknowledging his history of drug abuse was heart-wrenching, shedding light on the painful journey Chris had endured. Yeah, that's some seriously messed up stuff because as it turns out, the boys had their suspicions about Jermaine from the moment they met him. Their intuition told them that something was wrong, even though they were only 11 and 12 when they met him before they started working together. In an old interview, Chris Kelly said, we were just playing video games in this mall in Atlanta when all of a sudden, this dude comes up to us and said that he'd like for us to work with him as rap musicians. That dude turned out to be Jermaine Dupree. We had no idea who he was. In fact, I told Mac Daddy that I thought the guy was probably a child molester. Cat was still not done because he spilled more tea, claiming that Jermaine Dupree wasn't only involved in alleged SA, but also turned a blind eye to others in the industry doing the same. Hold on, it gets even weirder. There were whispers about a bizarre ritual between Diddy and Jermaine. Allegedly, they engaged in a sort of creepy swap meet, pimping out their artists to each other and brace yourself, even to others within their inner circle. Now, here's where the plot thickens. Reports surfaced about Diddy supposedly pimping out the members of his girl group, Danity Kane. And all that fuss about them looking perfect at all times? Well, according to Cat Williams, it might not have been about perfectionism. It could have been because he wanted them to look good for the men he wanted to pimp them out to. I heard him, and I'm giving you this, Aubrey. He stood up there and he said in front of a lot of people, we were in the studio, and I said something to him and walked out the studio. He said, yo, I'm a drug that off and pick them out and, and, and pimp them out to my <laughs> pimp them out to my neck. He said, I'ma drug them out. I'ma get them all on drugs and I'ma pimp their ass out to my neck. And I was like, there's somebody kids and walked out. That's the kind of stuff that's got people wondering if Jermaine allegedly went way beyond just offering a shot at fame. Cat Williams spills the beans, claiming Diddy wasn't just a bystander. He was allegedly in on it too. Back in 2011, Cat dropped a freestyle where he threw shade at numerous industry folks. But when it came to Diddy and Jermaine, he had some very specific words to say about them. Huh. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah? Jermaine Dupree. King of the house, if you ask me, baby. <laughs> Jermaine Dupree, small as a child. 
One thing about Cat, he doesn't mince words and he says it as it is, which makes the whole thing even more sinister the more you think about it. But it gets worse because according to sources, Diddy was not the only All one right, that you I, I think that's about as much of that filth that we can endure for the moment. There are several things. Uh, Puff Daddy, Kevin Hart, all these people I looked up to. Uh, the young boys, Usher at 13 years old, sleeping with Puff Daddy. I mean, you know, Michael Jackson was put on trial for sleeping with an 11-year-old boy, I think 12 years old, out at his ranch out in California. Y'all remember that? Actually went to trial for that. Um but, but why is it that Puff Daddy can get away with this with Usher at 13? And, and, and then, of course, these other two young boys from Atlanta, Georgia, one's dead now. This is the ugly side of what black people call success. It isn't success. It is worship of the devil. It's evil on steroids. And it needs to be exposed. I, I gave out an earlier call to Vice President Kamala Harris about Puff Daddy. And him being a, a, a woman beater, and she's a graduate of Howard University and vice president of the United States of America, and why they're not doing, why, why, they, why, uh, why are they continuing to promote him? And why isn't he under investigation? Um, so I, I want to say this, and I'm going to be doing more of this in depth, if you will, looking at, you hear me talking about black people. I don't hate black people. For people. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that love black people more than I do, but they're lost. They are blind. They are vile. They are absolutely the least productive people on the planet, except for this kind of nonsense you see that's happening here at present. Um, and I'm going to do it as an addendum to the teaching I have been doing and my reach out, reaching out and prayerfully that somebody will wake up and say, wait a minute, we need to hear what Pastor Manning is saying. The man's in Harlem, been living in Harlem for 43 years. Why would you say he hates black people? He's been feeding and educating children. He's just trying to tell us the truth. I pray that that will happen as a result of these uh, videos that we're going to, and other information we're going to bring to as, as time goes on.